One of the most commonly asked questions in regards to the Sony ZV-E10, Sony 6400, Sony 6600, or any other of the Sony APS-C cameras is, what lenses and kit shall I get for traveling? Well, I'm gonna share with you my travel setup. Now, how do I know this travel setup works? Well, it's because it's what I use whilst traveling and I've been hired as a professional photographer with this exact setup. So not only does this work as a casual setup, it works on a professional level too. Now, one of the first things I need to address is weight. There is a common misconception that as long as your kit is light, then it makes it perfect for travel. This is actually incorrect. Lightness is definitely a factor and something you need to take into account. Everything you take needs to be practical and versatile too. You can have one slightly heavier lens that is a lot more practical than say, three lighter lenses. So let's start. And the first thing I would recommend is a small rig cage. They are lightweight and offer great protection for your camera. When you're traveling, it's amazing how many bumps or knocks your equipment can take. So a little protection goes a long way. The amount of times it has stopped my camera from getting damaged means that ultimately it pays for itself. So my first recommendation is get yourself a cage to protect your camera from damage. Now let's take a look at the lenses I recommend. The first is the Sigma 18-50mm f2.8. It's small, lightweight, compact zoom lens. This will be our primary lens, meaning it's going to be on the camera about 75% of the time. You see, when you're traveling, you normally find that what you're going to be recording or photographing isn't planned. It's a spare of the moment, that's the shot I want kind of thing. While the Sigma 18-50 offers just so much and in such a small form factor, that it really is the way to go. It's sharp as shit and it's just as good at video as it is for photography. And with its aperture of f2.8, you're going to be fine for them low light situations. And you're going to have no problems achieving that blurry bokeness that everyone desires. Now you may be asking why take the Sigma over the standard Sony 16-50 kit lens. Well, for starters, the Sigma offers a constant aperture of f2.8. Far superior to that of the variable aperture on the kit lens. You also get better low light performance with that aperture and the sharpness and detail from the Sigma is again far superior to the kit lens. And that's throughout its entire zoom range. You may wonder if the 18mm is wide enough to vlog, but we have a solution for that later, so don't worry. So my second recommendation is a Sigma 18-50mm f2.8. Now for my third recommendation, and this one is a biggie, it's the 70 to 350 Sony G lens. Some of you may be saying that it's too big, too heavy for travel, but you'll see that as a combined package with the 18 to 50 Sigma, this whole setup weighs less than a lot of other two lens setups that don't offer nearly as much versatility as these two lenses do. And we will be saving more weight later on, so don't worry about that. So the 17 to 350mm is just a super monster lens from Sony and matched with the Sony autofocus system, in my opinion, it's unmatched for price and quality. Now it does have a variable aperture unlike the f2.8 of the Sigma, but at these zoom ranges, this isn't going to be a problem if you're looking for bokeh, trust me. Many may think that this isn't a good lens also for portraiture and only good for wildlife and sports but that just simply ain't the case. With an equivalent start in zoom of 105mm on a full frame camera, this lens kicks ass for portraits. Low light situations might be off the table with this lens, but we have the Sigma to cover us for them occasions. Plus, who really needs to zoom in in the dark? So the Sony 70-350mm and the Sigma 18-50mm are the two lenses that I recommend. Now for the tripod, and some of you are going to be really upset I'm afraid. You see, I have a love-hate relationship with tripods. I love them and use them all the time, but I hate carrying them around. 
hate setting them up and constantly unpacking them and packing them back away. I just hate the faffing around with them. 95% of the time I find myself with a tripod strapped to my bag and I'm just carrying it around as a dead weight. So for my fourth recommendation, I recommend ditching a full size tripod and switching to a shortened gorilla pod. Yes, I hear you crying. What about my six hour time lapse? What about my long exposures? Well, you still can. You just need to work a bit more creatively and find places where the camera and the gorilla pod can sit. It also doubles up as a handle for your vlogs, making the Sigma 18 to 50 mil a perfect companion. And guess what? No ball head, no arc and Swiss mount, no clips, no folding up legs. Just screw it to the bottom of your small rig cage and you've got an instant tripod at a weight that isn't going to impede you. And now for my final recommendation, a small microphone, especially if you're planning to record video. I recommend the Deity D4 Mini. It's just plug and play, requiring no batteries, and it's super lightweight, meaning you're going to get better sound quality than your onboard microphone. So there we go, we got the small rig cage, we got the Sigma 18 to 50, and we got the Sony 70 to 350. We've got ourselves a gorilla pod and now a small mic. Pretty much covered for any eventuality. We just need a small bag now to pack it in. Now I prefer a waste bag and that's all you need. You're off. Just make sure you put a decent carrier bag in also, just in case it rains to protect all your equipment. And there you have it, the best travel setup for your Sony APS-C camera. Please leave a comment and why not check out my work on Instagram here. And if you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Well, thank you for watching. And why not check out one of my other videos? Thanks, guys. Catch up soon.